Hey everybody, welcome to Exploration Place this morning. Sabrina's here to do a feeding for you and tell you a little bit about Rio. So stay tuned and enjoy. All right guys, this is Rio, our ball python. Most of you guys will recognize him. And most of you guys probably know that he is one of the most popular for our guests to watch eat. So we're gonna go ahead and give him a rat. strike but he seems like he's hungry today so hopefully he will eat for us easily. Good job Rio. Gonna make it like it's getting away. Ah let me go. Why do you have to wiggle him Sabrina? I wiggle him to evoke a uh, prey predator response in Rio. So uh, in the wild, uh, ball pythons are constrictors, so they will grab onto a food item of prey like a rat or a gerbil, small birds, things like that, and they will pull them in um, and they will recoil the way that he did. So he kind of makes an S shape with his body, springs out and grabs it, pulls it back and uses his entire body to squeeze it. So I pull it a little bit just to make him think that it's putting up a little bit of a fight. Um, we don't feed live here, we always feed frozen and thawed. So two things you can do to uh, invoke them to eat a little bit more is to go ahead and move the animal around so that it looks like it's alive. Um, snakes don't have very good vision, so he can sense that it's warm, he can smell its food. He sees it moving and he thinks it's alive, so he'll grab onto it and then he will go ahead and pull back like that and he will actually squeeze just like he would if he was trying to constrict an animal in the wild, um, even though it's not alive. So normally they would wait for the heartbeat to stop because the squeezing doesn't actually suffocate the animal, it causes cardiac arrest. Um, it just causes the blood pressure to raise so high that the heart stops basically. So he would wait for the heart to stop beating, but because Rio doesn't eat live um, and he's used to eating frozen and thawed, he usually will grab onto it and squeeze it until about the time it starts to cool down to his body temperature, which is generally a little bit colder than room temperature. Um, and then once it's around that, he will start to eat it. So sometimes I have to poke him around a little bit um, just to, to remind him that he's in the middle of something because I feel like he gets so caught up in the squeeze sometimes. So he'll hang on for a while. Until he'll hang on for a little while. Usually I let him sit for a minute and if he's not doing anything and it seems like he's forgotten what his task is, uh, I will prompt him just by moving his body around a little bit or sometimes moving the rod a little bit um, with the feeding tongs. You want to make sure you use the tongs um, when you're feeding one of these guys and the reason we do that is because they do not have super good vision and it would be very easy for them to mistake part of your body for part of their food. Um, as long as they can smell it, they know it's there, if they see your hand moving they might think that that is the rat. So you want to be careful doing that. Put them around a little bit, get a better view and that also might give him some more incentive to uh, proceed. Snakes in captivity, um, and maybe in the wild, but I don't think it's been observed too often, w once they've grabbed onto their prey, will sometimes kind of forget where they're at, um, especially if there's no uh, outside interference or struggle because they I think they just get comfortable in that position. Whereas in the wild, they would be trying to eat it quickly so that they wouldn't, um, so it wouldn't get away and so that they wouldn't become prey themselves to some other larger animal. So they kind of get lazy in captivity. Definitely. <laughs> He's sure pretty. What's with all the markings on him? Rio's markings are what you would call a wild or a normal colored ball python. And these are a really great uh, camouflage for him where he lives. These guys are from sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, they can be found in the wild in Nigeria. And they usually frequent um, grassland areas and will hide in logs and bushes and sometimes small trees or, or uh, shrubs and things like that. The smaller males are semi-aboreal and the females typically stay on the ground. Um, so this coloration is fairly versatile in the backgrounds where he would be from uh, in his native habitat. So he can hide in, in a lot of different areas with this, whether it's in the bush or in the grass. Just because of this splotchy pattern kind of blends in with the foliage that is present um, in those areas. And he doesn't drop down on his prey to catch them? He chases? He would, um, yeah. So. Ball pythons typically have kind of a stealth approach where they'll they'll sit quietly and they'll wait and once they see something, they will slowly kind of follow it um, as to not spook it off. So that also helps not just with 
him to hide from predators, but him to hide from his prey as well. Um, and when he's done eating, we'll have to try and take a, take a look at his labial pits or his heat pits. If you look at a ball python or many other snakes, if you look at the top of their mouth, um, their upper lip, between their nose and their upper lip, you'll see that they have a bunch of small dots along the top ridge, and that is m their main sense for finding food, actually. It's, they can sense uh, they can sense temperature with those, and so if they can see something, they can even if they can see something that is warmer than what's around it, they usually know based on the size and the smell what it is, and that's how they find their prey. So the really cool thing about that is snakes can actually see through grass, leaves, things like that because of that sense that that sixth sense that they have. It's like seeing infrared, I guess. Yeah, basically. Huh. That's neat. And that's also why when we um, when we prep the frozen and thawed rats, we heat them up, and I always try to heat up the head a little bit more because a wild or a live rat would um, would be warmest at the head and the feet, and you want him to grab the head because that would be easier for him to eat it. He has eaten them backwards or sideways before, but when they start at the head and proceed down, it, it just goes down easier. It's like if you were to eat a hot dog sideways, it wouldn't work out super well. <laughs> so we try to feed him in a way that will uh, inhibit the easiest locomotion for him for when he's swallowing it. Now, the really cool thing about whoop, about snakes uh, is that they are the only animal that can eat something that is larger than their head without chewing. <laughs> How do they do that? So their lower jawbone, um, rather than being shaped, Rather than being shaped in one solid piece, like you would see here, um, this part is actually not fused in their jaw bones, and it is not hinged on the side. So these two pieces kind of float around on their own, and they're attached with um, these ligaments that are very, very stretchy, like elastic, but very muscular. So they're strong, but they're very stretchy. And so what they can do is they can actually stretch these two parts of their jaw bones out, and then they can move them independently, sort of almost like, like hands. They can move them around and kind of change them around, and that allows them to spread them out as large as they need for the prey item that they're eating, as well as to sort of pull it in by moving them independently on either side, like almost like they're reeling in a fish um, type of motion. I didn't know that. I knew they could unhinge the back jaw or the back jaw wasn't hinged, but yeah. I didn't know they would split open at the front. Yeah, they can go completely separate. Um, and another cool thing is that he's, he doesn't just have the one set of, of mandibles like that. He's got uh, the top of his, the roof of his mouth is actually has a second set of teeth. So he has two sets of teeth, one on the outside of his mouth, one on the roof of his mouth inside, uh, which is sort of like a V shape, and that one can move as well. So he can easily pull things into his mouth that way, especially with his teeth, the way that they face, they kind of pull things backwards rather than just being straight up and down for chewing um, or tearing. And they've got a lot of teeth in their mouth. They do. They have a lot, and they will often lose their teeth. Um, their teeth are not super well anchored in their jaw. reason for that is most likely just that if they were out hunting and they needed to quickly let go of an animal, say it was too large, um, too large of a prey item that they had mistaken or, or sized up wrong um, and they don't want to get dragged off by it or if they needed to spit out a smaller prey item super fast because they wanted to get away from another animal that was trying to interfere with their meal um, they can easily pull their mouth away from it even if the teeth the, the backwards facing teeth are too tightly stuck into the flesh of the animal they can just pull their teeth out if they need to um, and the teeth will grow back fairly quickly. It's some, it, it might hurt a little bit, but usually it doesn't cause any damage. There's no, it doesn't um, impair them at all to, to do that, so they can quickly regrow the teeth. Their teeth are not very big, but they are, they are long and backwards, and they have a lot of them, and they're very sharp. <laughs> Hence the reason you don't want to get bitten when they're trying to get their prey. You, you don't want to get bitten, definitely not. It wouldn't be fun. Especially if your your response is going to be to pull away, and so not only would that worsen your bite and end up probably with almost little sliver type teeth stuck in your skin, um, but also you could injure the snake doing that as well. So, no, well, I'd say he's progressing here. He's doing quite well. Get you back into the light a little bit so we can see what's going on. Oh, 
of these gonna unfold themselves, I think. Gotta make room to get that big rat in there. Now you can just see his, his nose. <laughs> How often are you feeding him nowadays? Uh, usually I usually feed him about every two to three weeks. Um, I've kind of cut back to um, less feedings, um, smaller feedings as well, because he's gotten a little bit chunky in the last while. For a long time he wasn't eating, so we were concerned with getting him to to eat properly. He was just, um, he was in sort of a winter state and often they won't eat um, for a couple of months during the winter months. So when he came out of that state, I think I, I overdid it a little bit and you can see here he's starting to, he's starting to get back to a better shape. This should be a smooth taper from his, this part of his tail going up. It shouldn't just plop out. Um, and it's gotten more to where it's a smooth taper now, but for, for a week or two there, you could see a bit of chub right in this area, which you don't want to see with a ball python. Um, because that means that he's eating a little bit too much, so we he cut him back a little bit. It's his winter weight. He needs to get ready for bikini season. Yeah, exactly. Summer's coming, Rio. <laughs> and if you look closely here, you can actually see those labial pits that I was talking about. They almost look like a row of nostrils on his upper lip here. Um, but those are actually used uh, as a prey finding mechanism, so he can actually sense heat with those. And you can't see it now, but another cool thing that snakes have that allow them to be able to eat something that is larger than their head without choking on it, basically, um, is something called an extendable windpipe, which is sort of like, it, it almost looks like a second tongue that comes out from under their regular tongue, but it can extend out quite far, and it is tube-shaped, and it leads um, straight to their trachea, so they can actually breathe through that extendable windpipe while they are consuming a large prey item, and that allows them to be able to spend a long time getting it down without having to worry about lack of oxygen. Wow, I've never noticed those pits before. Do they just become more prominent because of the position he's oh, in? Oh, definitely when they're eating, they definitely kind of stretch out a little bit more and you can see them. Yeah, I've never noticed those before. Um, and also the color in them kind of changes. They become a little bit more flush, a little bit more pink when he's eating. Um, probably just because the entire area has a lot more blood flow and he, he's utilizing them as well, so. You can see him sort of walking that prey forward with those split yeah, jaws. Yeah, yeah, you can see as he's pulling it in, he'll move each side up, sort of like if he were if he were shimmying up a rope in gym class. He's kind of one side at a time up the rat's body. He does a fairly good job of it. Um, even when he, so the reason that they need to eat them from the head to the tail is, as you can see, the legs kind of fold down, everything kind of folds back backwards in in this direction down towards the, the rat's tail. Um, if he was to start at this end, these legs would kind of impair him and get stuck going upwards, um, which would not be good for him. I have seen him eat rats like that. I have also seen him eat rats sideways, but it takes a lot longer and when he's done, he doesn't look super pleased with himself, so I don't think it's very comfortable to eat them that way. You can see them stretch out in the body too, right? You sure can, um, especially um, snakes like Rio that have a very uh, elongated and thin neck, when he goes to pull this rat up, uh, he'll kind of stand up, and a lot of times when we have guests watching, especially younger kids, they, they think he's about to, to strike again, but what he's actually doing is just stretching out his esophagus so that he'll be able to pull the rat in more easily. And he'll almost stand up, sort of like the cobras or snakes do in cartoons, where they stand up with their head up in the air, um, and then he'll slurp up the last of it, and you, he often will have the, the tail hanging out of his mouth like a piece of spaghetti. So then he'll suck that up and you can actually see it going down his neck. And then if you watch closely at that point, you can see his muscles contracting all the way down, down his neck, pushing it down his esophagus, um, which is quite long into, into his stomach. And then how long to digest? Uh, usually it takes them about at least four to seven days, sometimes a little bit longer. Rio usually takes about seven to 10 days before he will uh, be fully digested, and then you'll leave us a big poop in his cage. <laughs> and they're not small either. Um, his poops are close to like the size of a small dog. Really? Like a small dog's poop. Um, like uh, close to the size of the rat. Wow. And does he actually digest all the teeth and the bones in the rat? He does. So you'll see when he poops, he's got his his urate, which is sort of like a whitish, yellowish kind of chunk. That's his pee, basically, which usually comes out right before. And then he'll have poop, which is just like a big brown, basically like a, it looks like a small dog's poop or like a cat poop almost. <laughs> um, and then usually you'll, you'll, you'll see bits of kind of chalky, hard white stuff in there. Um, and that is the, the bones that have been digested as well. 
Do his poops smell bad, like other yes, poops? Yes, they, they do. do. They, they, they smell horrible. <laughs> Um, snakes, snakes are some of the worst. Most reptile poops aren't too bad, but tortoises and snakes definitely have some stench to them. So thankfully he doesn't do it super often. Usually he poops about maybe twice a month. I guess it varies depending on how much you're feeding him. Yeah, there was actually a snaking, uh, I was reading about, of course I was reading about records of how, how long snakes have gone without pooping in captivity. <laughs> And the longest uh, ever recorded for a snake in captivity was 420 days without a bowel movement. Wow. Yeah. So this is one of the most interesting parts when he, he pulls it up. Like I was saying, he's going to have his little spaghetti noodle hanging out of his mouth, which is always cute. You can see it all twisted down his back. Yeah. And so sometimes, right now he's not in the worst position, but sometimes he'll curl himself. He's sitting on himself almost. So when the rat gets here, he's gonna have a bit of a hard time trying to pull it in. Um, so once it gets down a little bit further, I'll probably shift him over a little bit more. Sometimes he'll do it himself, but sometimes he just doesn't realize what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Usually he's, he's fine with it. I think he's got it this time. He's pretty agreeable doing all this for the camera. Rio, Rio. He misses our visitors too. That's, he definitely does. Rio is a showman and he loves to put on shows for the kids. He loves the birthday parties with the kids. He likes to come out and have everyone pet him. And No, he has no problem being observed, um, which is great for, for what we do here. Oh, yeah, he's got it himself. He's going to untuck himself. He's realizing that he's squishing his stomach there where he's trying to get it into. So. It's funny how connected to what's going on in their body they are. Oh, definitely. Um, they're definitely way more aware of themselves than they are of anything else in their environment. Uh, that and prey. So predators, they often don't see coming in the wild, which is part of the reason that they have that camouflage, as well as part of the reason that they hide so much. In the wild, ball pythons spend up to 22 hours a day hiding and basically resting. Um, because the rest of that time, when they do come out, um, is often trying to stay away from other animals um, or trying to find other animals to eat. Are you all finished, Rio? Looks like it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Thank you, Rio. Good job. So we're planning Thanks, to come everybody. back and do more of these, everybody, because we know that everyone's looking for things to do. So the next time Sabrina's doing a feeding, we will do our best to be live for you again. Until then, we will stay here and just keep taking care of the critters. You guys all stay home, stay safe, and we can't wait to see you again sometime whenever it is the right time to come back to the museum. Thanks, Sabrina. Good job. Bye, guys. <laughs>